morning. It's Thursday, the 22nd of December, 2016. Lovely, lovely quiz night last night. I had lovely surprises last night. Oh, yes. Look, all the people got me a card. And they all... Oh, why have I not got it here? Oh, no. I thought I had the card here now. Where's that gone? Oh, I'm all over the place, aren't I? Look. Never mind. No card. Oh, oh, hang on. This is it. Here he is. Look, I've got a card from one of the teams that comes every single week to the King's Head Theatre Bar uh, quiz that I do on Wednesdays. Every Wednesday, that is, half past eight till half past ten. And one of the teams, the short... By the way, the, the voice is even deeper today. You're liking this voice, aren't you? I'm liking this voice. I wonder if I can still sing with this. Oh, come, oh, come here, man. Oh, I can. I can still hold the notes, dear. So much better than Susan Boyle, don't you think? Susan? Hello, I'm Susan Boyle. Right, here we are, look. Look at this, though. And it's been signed by all of them. Let me just check no one's put their address there, no. Look, lots of signatures in there. How nice is that? That's from the team known as the Short Planks, who come week in, week out. I'm going to sneeze. They come week in, week out since we started the quiz there. Which... Oh. <laughs> which is now about a year and a half old. Isn't that wonderful? How kind they are. Little message, isn't it? Ho, ho, ho. Thank you for the quizzes from the planks. That's from our good friend, Eamon. Joyez Noel. Am I saying that right? It's got an X in it. I don't think you pronounce the X. Joyex Noel. Uh, that's from Johnny. Um, Julie's. Hi, Kia, kiddo. Jo I can't quite read this. Hi, kiddo. Join my gans, we people burdening on perfection. We must stick together. <laughs> Thank you for entertaining us all year. Looking forward to the same next year. And that's from the lovely Jane. So nice. So, so nice. My good friend Bruce has signed it. And uh, happy caravanning and Barry Manilowing. Keep up the entertainment from Jules. How lovely that, they, that one of the teams should do that. So thank you very much to the short planks. Um, for I'm very touched by anything that that uh, that that comes my way at Christmas time. Not only that, but the staff at the King's Head. I I would go as far as saying uh, we we all get on really well there. Possibly they're the most joining in staff of everything I do. Do you know Do you, do you know what I mean by that? You know, uh, there'll be a bit of banter going backwards and forwards, and they got me a little card like this to Chris. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. From all here, all here at the King's Head Theatre Bar. So there's a little card there. Not only that, and this, as you well know, is very unusual in this day and age. As I walked in, and the traffic last night, again, not too bad. Isn't it strange? Now, this was the week I thought would be even worse than the last few weeks. Because I've had about five or six weeks now of really bad traffic going anywhere sort of north London. Excuse me, I'm going to have to blow my nose. I'll, I'll, I'll cut the sound, right? <coughs> Just a second. Oh, dear. <coughs> <coughs> we got a bit of a phlegmy cough at the moment. <coughs> oh, and it's on me hand as well. Oh, no, how awful. And this is very, very unusual in this day and age. I walked in, and the manager, Ashley, comes running over with two gifts, a lovely lemon cake. Yum, yum, yum. Not only that... And a box of Maltesers as well. I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna clean my throat. I'm sorry, just a second. That's a bit better. Hello, testing one two. Okay, that we we'll carry on. And uh, not only that, but she says, and I'm putting you a little bonus in your wages this week. Wow, wow. Doesn't matter how much it is. The word bonus came up. You know, and so few people do that now. I don't know where these managers go, business school or whatever. And it's, it's not just bars and clubs. It's everything. It's everything. People generally used to get some sort of bonus, something at Christmas to say thank you for the year's work. But it just doesn't happen anymore, does it? I think that that must be the first bonus I've got for 25 years. 
Every, well, you know, when I used to work, when I was uh, much younger, you know, I think we used to get a bonus at British Telecom. I can't remember what it was. Maybe a half a day's pay or something like that. Or, we, or we'd finish early on, on the Christmas Eve. But to get a bonus is, I, I was just so touched by that. I really was. I really was. So thank you very, very much, uh, Ashley. And that is much, much appreciated. It really is very, very kind. So a lovely, lovely light last night. We had 10 teams of players. In uh, uh, and um, also, Ashley had put out. She's the manager there. She'd put out crackers, crackers on the the regular teams' tables, crackers and crisps, and I think there were sweets as well. And you know that's what you call customer service. That's how you look after your regular customers. You must look after regular customers. Too many times have I seen a regular customer in a bar or something like that. Um, uh, knock over a drink only to have to buy another one and someone uh, don't come over and say "Would you? oh I'll get you another one you know a, a member of staff doesn't happen anymore the attitude is why should I you know it's that old one how many times you heard that why should I why should I give them another drink they knocked it over they can buy it again. And I just don't understand where this mentality comes from. I really don't. The whole thing with Christmas bonuses. There's a lot of people that work Christmas Eve for normal money. Or they might get shoved another five. I mean, it's outrageous. Outrageous. I wouldn't work. wouldn't work Christmas Day or any of that anymore. I don't, I don't do Christmas um, work-wise anymore. I generally stop on uh, Christmas Eve. As is the case this year. Uh, so my last day will be Friday and then Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, Boxing Day, Tuesday. And actually the, the next job I will have is on the Wednesday. Because I made a little error in the programme yesterday, gang. Uh, the quiz is on next Wednesday, OK? So if you want to join us there, uh, quiz night every Wednesday next week at the King's Head Theatre Bar, Upper Street, Islington, from half past eight to half past ten. OK? Uh, as I say, ten teams in there last night. Nice people. Nice people in there. And uh, Ray Reynolds was there with Peter from that little radio station in Essex that is on. And they won the other week. Huh, they were seventh this week, dear. What happened, Ray? You're not paying full attention, are you, dear? Were you on that table telling your jokes? Is that why you were missing the questions? I think that's quite possible. Yes, you were missing. You weren't paying attention last night, Ray. That must be why you lost. Seventh, dear. What happened? God's sake. So congratulations to everyone who played last night. Very pleased with that. Uh, the last of my gifts arrived yesterday in the post. Uh, that was my gift for my niece and my nephew, uh, the older one. So they arrived in the post last night. That's it. All sorted. I wrapped them up last night when I got back from work about quarter to back. Oh, no, I got back. It was a bit later last night. It was about 12 o'clock. I got late uh, back from work last night. Um, so wrapped all my presents. Waitrose yesterday. We went into Waitrose to do a bit of shopping yesterday. That was very quiet. Very surprised. Didn't have to queue at all at the till. Those um, self-scanning till things, uh, you know, that I didn't have to queue there at all. So that was yesterday. Um, uh, bad news is that I still haven't cleaned the car. I was going to do it yesterday and it started raining. I thought it was pointless doing it while it's raining, isn't it? So I, I'm going to try and do that, actually, after I've finished chatting to you today and uploaded the show. I'll go to the car, empty it, take it to the um, uh, uh, car cleaning place, and then I'll walk over to the swimming pool with my mate Ron because he needs to have his car done as well. well. I'm not, I'm not, I've got to say I'm not happy leave. No, I don't think I can do that. I can't can't leave my car anywhere. I don't trust anyone. Do you trust anyone? Oh, you can't trust anyone, dear. Never leave phones and handbags on tables. Could you keep an eye on that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll keep an eye on that. All right, don't worry about it. Never leave your phones and handbags on tables. I don't trust many people. I think that's in the past have been ripped off a little bit and you, you, you kind of lose trust with people. I certainly don't want to leave a great big car in a garage, you know, to be cleaned. I mean, you don't know. What if it goes missing? Are you insured for that? You've left them the keys, haven't you? You know, a member of staff might be a bit disgruntled. Mightn't they? And they can, you know, take away your car. Just a minute. I've got a little button there that I press so you can't hear the noise. The awful noise of me sneezing and, and all that business. 
Ready for the bad weather? Very windy on Christmas Eve. My good friend Nathan Rayo, who writes a lot of the horror weather stories for uh, generally the Daily Mail, the Daily Express. I think he's done The Sun as well. Check this out. Powerful gales on Friday. Oh, it starts even earlier than Christmas Eve, dear. Powerful gales on Friday threaten travel chaos, disruption to power supplies and damage to buildings and trees. Scotland and North will bear the brunt. Oh, well, that's OK, then. We won't, we won't read that any further, then. <laughs> oh, our poor friends in Scotland. You do get it up there quite bad, don't you? I mean, I'm kind of travelling north, but kind of northeast to Lincolnshire. Um, so hopefully you won't get it too bad there. Uh, hello to Chris Lotz in the US of A. We were talking about the tea stain, which I haven't yet tried to move, which is probably very foolish because I've let it dry in now. How to remove the tea stain. This is from Chris. He says, number one, take the plant next to your clock in your world famous television and radio studio. Number two, place plant on top of stain. Number three, bam, the stain is gone. Thank you for that very, 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 very useful piece of information. That is much, much appreciated. Thank you very much to Chris Lodz. <laughs> Did you find one of those five pound notes that are worth a lot of money? If you missed the story, four special five pound notes have been engraved with a tiny portrait of author Jane Austen. And they've been put into they have now been put into circulation. Could be worth more than twenty thousand pounds. Now that's what it will look like. Look, can you see that there? Okay, the first of four notes uh, have been spent uh, in Kels uh, has been spent in Kelso in the Scottish Borders on Monday. Yeah, something to do while you while all your power goes out when the weather comes. Be very careful out there on Friday. Three more notes have been spent in England, Wales and Northern Ireland this week. Mr Short's last work, a portrait of the Queen on a pinhead, fetched £100,000. Isn't that clever? How does he do that? Very, very clever. The artist came up with the idea of engraving a five millimetre portrait, which is like that. It's like that. It's like that. Five millimetre portrait um, of Pride and Prejudice star uh, author Jane Austen on the transparent part of the new plastic Bank of England £5 notes to mark the 200th anniversary of uh, Austin's death next year. So have a good look. You know, be very, very careful how you look. All right? Look carefully at your £5 notes. You might well have one of those there. And talking of money, you might have some valuable coins in your wallet as well. Look at this. If you haven't been lucky enough to find one of the new £5 notes... That's worth a fortune. There's no need to give up. Polymer notes with serial numbers beginning AA01 are being snapped up by collectors and being selling for hundreds of pounds. Oh, we're not interested in the hundreds. We want the tens of thousands, dear. Tens of thousands of pounds, please. In the next year or so, polymer £10 notes will start appearing and no doubt attract a similar prices. So hold on to your polymer notes. Now, they say you can't rip them, but I'm telling you, you can. If you... I haven't got one with me. So, poor. Please send your £5 notes through, yes. If you try and tear one like that, I don't think you can do it. However, if there is the smallest of nicks in that note, uh, then, then it's very easy. In fact, I would go as far as saying it tears easier than paper. I mean... I don't think you're allowed to do this. I think this would be called defacing the money. But if you was to take a pair of scissors and just cut the tiniest of nicks in the top and then try and tear it and you see how easily that tears. I don't know what you would do with a torn one. I mean, with the old notes, with the old paper notes, you were allowed, I think, to um, tape two bits together, weren't you? And then hand them in and I suppose they... they collect them at some point and and destroy them and replace them with new ones i don't know if that's the same with the plastic ones if you if you were to tear it are you allowed to stick that back together i mean you couldn't put it in a machine after that oh that oh you could have fun with that one in the old self-service checkout machines you'd jam up all the machines wouldn't you <laughs> there's just a just an idea of some fun for you to do at the weekend do it um the 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 
The notes are not the only British currency in wide circulation to be worth more than their face value, goes the story. According to the Manchester Evening News, some 50 pence coins, for example, are selling for much as £3,000, with plenty more worth than £20. So what should you be looking at? There's a London Olympic 50 pence piece, OK? Is there a picture of this? One moment, please. I don't see a picture of that. No, just a moment. Oh, it has got a few pictures on there. Not the London Olympic one. I don't think it's the London. Oh, yeah. Is that it here? Yes. London Olympic one. This is worth £3,000. Look, there's there's the design on that. Because there's not many of them made. Okay. There's a 1983 brand new two pence piece. That's worth £650. I'm sure I've had some of those before. I don't know if it has to be brand new, like an uncirculated. I don't know. There's a Kew Gardens 50 pence piece, right? That's that one there. Look at that. Uh, an European Community Commemorative 50 pence piece. Only worth 20 quid. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Bye-bye, European Union. <laughs> Not long now, my darlings. Just a couple of years, all right? Um, what else have we got here? There's quite a few of them, you know. There's a Charles Dickens two pounds piece. Now, what's that one there? Is that it there? I think it's that's a strange. I don't know what that is. Is that supposed to be his head or what? Does that look like a head? Looks like a not a very good design, that one. There's a production mistake. Some of the Guy Fawkes two pound coins released in 2005 bore the words. P member, P member instead of remember. That is worth eight times their face value. What's that? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, four. Oh, it's only worth sixteen quid, dear. That's not worth worrying about that. Look, so can you see? They've they've they printed it wrong. P member. I mean, how do you do that? How does someone who works in the Royal Mint make a mistake like that, dear? Very terrible. Very terrible. What else have we got here? One sinking of the Mary Rose. That's a that's a two pound coin. Only worth six quid that one. But that's nice that one, isn't it? But some of these coins, um, some of these coins are you know maybe worth a little bit more. Say eight quid instead of two quid or ten quid. I think they're quite nice things to keep, don't you? Perhaps pass them on to a grandchild or a or a much younger niece or nephew, something like that, for years to come to look at. You know, not everything Not everything has to be, you know, monetised, does it? I mean, look at this show. Look at this programme, for example. No monetising on this show. Let's be honest, who's going to pay to watch this old crap? They're not, are they? <laughs> A couple of messages um, from yesterday's show, and then we'll do the uh, uh, the birthdays today. Happy, uh, hello to Simon Keane. On the subject of the betting, you remember I told you someone I know won £10,000 at the casino, and I told you he spent two hundred pound in there, won ten thousand pounds on the roll of a of that little book. Oh, I can't remember the, what it's called again. You turn this thing, and the little ball goes round and round. You know that thing, and it landed on his thing. Ten thousand pounds he won. Wow, wow. Uh, Simon says maybe true, two hundred quid and win ten grand. But how many other visits has he made where he's lost two hundred pound a night? I, I don't know. I didn't ask, and lost more than that, Chris. Put a quid on tonight on what's that? Mensur Solovic, this is Simon who's sent this in, to win three to one, and James Wade to win three to one at the Ali Pali Dart, 7.15 start, win a fiver. <laughs> you won't even get a drink in some of the places I work out for that, Simon. God's sake, five quid, dear. Here, look, I want to show you this other Christmas card here. This was sent to my by my friend, good old Ray Reynolds. Look at that. A Radio Times Christmas card. We like that very much. Thank you very much. Yes, a little message in there. Thank you, Ray. Always very appreciated everything that you're sending in, OK? Um, let's do today's birthdays, boys and girls. Happy birthday this morning to Grant. Good morning, Grant. I don't suppose you'll watch this far. You never ring me, dear. Never send a message, but never mind. I'm still wishing you a happy birthday because that's the sort of person I am. Ho, ho, ho. Happy birthday to Grant, 42 years old today. Happy birthday, Richard J. Lee Rich. Now, I think you're in Croydon, aren't you, Rich? Are you one of the Croydon, Croydon posse?
who's 51 today. Happy birthday, Richard. Amy Daniel, down there on the south coast, is 29 today. Happy birthday, Amy. It's, you know, it's years since I saw you, darling. Daniel Williams, DJ extraordinaire. Happy birthday, Daniel. And uh, AJ Daniel is, hang on, is that the same person? AJ Daniel, 29. No, I think that's the same person. One moment, please. I shall now check. I'm sure you're, you're, what's her name? Aren't you? Have you got two profiles, dear? I'm sure you have. Happy birthday to you all, gang. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Grant, Richard, Amy, Daniel and AJ. Happy birthday to you. Have a nice day for your birthdays. Going downstairs now to play you this morning's Christmas Carol. And welcome back to the United Kingdom Talk Concert Hall, boys and girls, where this morning's Christmas Carol is O Little Town of Bethlehem. Three verses for you. Sing along. Have you opened your hymn books at the correct page? Here we go. mistakes in there as always. I told you before, I'm not a professional pianist or anything like that. I just play for fun. Okay, have a lovely Thursday, boys and girls. Uh, I've, you know, the voice has come back now. Coughing stopped. Sneezing stopped. It's all up now. And I will promise to get my car clean today. Have a nice Thursday. Cheerio now.